there's a liberation of energy and the energy that's moving in one of those lower energy centers that's really living in suffering, that's living in pain, let's say it's the second energy center, it's going to be released into the heart. We've seen this so many times and the person will tell you that it's like um, their heart exploded. I've heard that so many times, like my heart. Hello and welcome to the Pacific Channel where we talk about the law of attraction, how to manifest anything you want, energy healing, meditation, and more. I'm your host, Steve Doherty. In this video, a woman who is in obvious emotional pain asked Dr. Joe Dispenza a question about the severe child abuse that she endured since birth. You can even hear it in her voice. It she has a tremendous amount of hurt and pain inside her when it comes to this touchy subject of child abuse. So she explains that she has done a ton of work on herself for a long time to get past all of it, but that nothing seems to work. What can she do to forgive her mother? It's complicated by the fact that her mother has already died. How can she forgive her mother when what she did was so bad? Dr. Joe gives an excellent answer, but to me, the first step is to decide to forgive the other person. Not for them, but for you. When you realize how much damage you can do to yourself, your entire life and your body, it gives you much more incentive to forgive. But that doesn't help a person to actually forgive. Still, that's not a great answer. Another way to look at it is that the greater the trauma, the greater the person you have to be to be and become to overcome it. What this means is that because of the bad things that happen to us, we then have access to become even greater than if we had never had the trauma to begin with. This will lead you to become a better person, perhaps more compassionate, more grateful, more loving, and more sensitive to others and their needs. Trauma will either destroy you or make you much better. It's your choice. But even that isn't very helpful. To me, the best answer is EFT, Emotional Freedom Techniques. It is an excellent tool for trauma. And there's even a tearless trauma technique that keeps a person from experiencing the pain of reliving the trauma. Gary Craig, the creator of EFT, helped to heal nearly every single veteran that he worked on at a VA hospital. These guys witnessed and went through horrific events that most of us couldn't possibly imagine. I don't even want to mention any of the examples that I've heard. They're so bad. Most of these veterans had nightmares every single night of their lives and had PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Gary helped them not only to remove the emotional intensity of every single event that they ever experienced, but he helped them to get rid of the nightmares and the constant unrelenting stress and guilt. Let's see what advice Dr. Joe gives this woman who was abused by her mother, and then we'll discuss it further. Wrote my question, so I'm going to probably do a mix of reading and talking. So, um, as a victim of severe childhood abuse, I've carried emotional pain all my life. And my quest has been to get rid of this pain. And I find that pathetic because I haven't really lived the life that I could have lived because first I was always trying to get rid of pain. So now after decades of meditation, intense reflections, therapies, and even a personal awakening, I'm at the precipice of the one thing that I still carry, which I think I feel it will either kill me or I will get rid of it. And that is first to forgive myself for um, caring so much for so long. And um, sorry, and forgiveness of uh, the woman who gave me life, who I have hated intensely for ruining this life on so many levels. And I have not the slightest idea of how to do that. I have no idea. People talk about forgiveness all the time and they never really say how you do that. Mm -hmm. And I know that, you know, first is for me and not for her, but um, 
It seems like ever since I've remembered all the nonverbal abuse, which has been since she died and, you know, the memories started coming in and I started seeing, um, you know, through my um, third eye, I guess, I started seeing visually all the things, a lot of the things that happened even in uh, when I was in the womb. It, it feels like there's a vindication, you know, like a vindication of how finally I've been able to see it. Finally, I know what happened and I'm stuck there. It's like a false purpose and I can't, I can't forgive her. And I, it's starting to show up in my health. And I don't know how to do that. Well, I, I really appreciate uh, your question. I appreciate you, uh, Edith. And I do want to talk to you um, a little bit about trauma and a little about what um, I know about it. Um, there have been people in this work uh, other than you uh, that have had very, very difficult pasts and were subject to all kinds of abuse and molestation and trauma uh, from a caregiver or a parent. And um, when we're young, um, we don't have a whole lot of critical facilities. Our brain waves are slow. There's, there's no editor between the conscious mind and the subconscious mind. And so what we tend to see or experience tends to be encoded subconsciously in a memory system in the uh, brain and body called the implicit memory system or the non-declarative memory system. That system is the subconscious system that is responsible for a lot of our behaviors that happen automatically. Unfortunately, when that trauma is associated with someone that is taking care of us, we get really confused about love and we get really confused about life and confused about ourselves. Um, and we know that um, when people are in that state, based on our, our um, real-time brain scans, that when they're thinking about uh, anything that has to do with that emotion, um, they're actually making their brain worse. They're, they're thinking in the past. and. Uh, the solution actually exists outside of that. Now, I never tell people to remember the issue, the incident, the trauma. All I want them to do is really overcome the emotion. It's the emotion that is keeping them connected to the memory of that, that event. Yeah, that's what's driving the brain back to the past over and over again. So we've seen people that have been in this work that have had really challenging and difficult situations and they've done the work every day, showed up every day and made up their mind that they were gonna change some aspect of that emotional state and change the aspect of feeling suicidal, having a lot of different health conditions, having night terrors, um, having severe mood swings, uh, having all these problems that are taking place in their life. They, did, they, 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 they didn't want to live on narcotics any longer. They didn't want to feel fear any longer or feel those emotions any longer. And, and they couldn't describe the emotional state. They couldn't describe really what it was because it's non-declarative. It's, it's in there. The, it's in the body as well as the brain. The trauma's in the body as well. And so when the body's reliving that, emo that emotion from the past, it's always trying to forecast if it could happen again in the future. And you st the body stays in that state anticipating the event. And that's where we're in the familiar past and the predictable future. And, and those people that have done the work every day and they come to the end of their emotional belief, or they're sitting in the meditation and all of a sudden this horrible feeling comes up that they hadn't felt, really horrible feeling, um, that they hadn't felt in a very long time since they were a child so horrible that they thought that they were doing their meditation wrong. They thought they were doing something wrong. And in truth, they were actually doing something really right. They were taking the body out of the past. And the body is uh, intuitive enough to know that it's got the brakes on because it, it can't trust the unknown because that would mean you wouldn't be, wouldn't be ready for that trauma in the future. So this goes against the, the body innately. It's a violation of the body. The body's putting its heels in the dirt saying, 
Um, you take me out of this feeling, I can't, I don't know if I can protect, protect you any longer. It's going to take a lot to let go. And these people thought about all the meditations that they had been doing for the last year or two years or whatever, working on the overcoming process. And they thought of those meditations that they sat through that were the difficult ones. And they were curious on what was on the other side of that feeling, what was on the other side of that thought, and they stuck it out for themselves. Those people who actually went past that point and sat through it and said, I'm just going to go one more time. Um, they literally took their body right out of the past and energy moves right into the heart. Now, I can only talk around this idea. It's just that it's, it's your conviction that there's something on the other side of this feeling that causes you to venture a little further. And if the body is doing what it does to settle it down uh, in that moment, tell it it's no longer the mind and return back uh, to that present moment. It's the act of doing that over and over again that tempers the animal. It, it, it tempers the body mind uh, and the body as the mind. And when the body finally surrenders to a new mind, there's a liberation of energy and the energy that's moving in one of those lower energy centers that's really living in suffering, that's living in pain, let's say it's the second energy center, it, it's going to be released into the heart. We've seen this so many times and the person will tell you that it's like um, their heart exploded. I've heard that so many times, like my heart blew open. It was like um, I was undivided wholeness. I, you know, these beautiful words to describe this moment where they release themselves from the past. And when energy makes it into the heart, um, what it does is it releases an enormous amount of oxytocin uh, at the same time, and then it signals the brain, and the brain re releases oxytocin. And oxytocin signals nitric oxide, and nitric oxide signals another chemical uh, called endothelial-derived relaxing factor, which causes the arteries in the heart and in the, the lungs to actually open up. So now there's more energy, there's more blood flow, it's getting engorged. And just like sexual organs, when this center gets engorged, it's a different consciousness, it's an awakening. Um, the person is made whole again. They're, they're no longer um, in the past now, and they're at a different level of consciousness. And when that occurs, when the oxytocin is released, the vagus nerve signals the amygdala along with the oxytocin and the signals the amygdala to tell it that the trauma is over. Reset the baseline for trauma and oxytocin then seeps into all the survival networks in the amygdala for fear, for pain and for aggression and it literally numbs them, it, it blocks them. And so the only thing the person can feel in this moment is love, that's the last set of circuits in there. And when this occurs, they look back at their entire past, everything that's happened to them, all the betrayers, all the abuse, all the, uh, all the events, and they see it from a different level of consciousness and they don't want to change anything because now they understand why they needed to go through that experience that brought them to this moment of freedom. They could have never gotten to this moment of freedom unless they had gone through those experiences. And now there's a natural sense of forgiveness. Now this isn't something that we have to practice forgiveness. I don't, I, I think it's okay, but I don't think that's the end all. So when there's enormous amounts of oxytocin released, uh, the research on oxytocin shows that just the tiniest elevation in oxytocin causes you to naturally want to forgive. In other words, people who are given small doses of oxytocin will trust more. They naturally just trust more and they forgive more. Why do they forgive more? Because they feel this feeling that feels so great that they don't want to let go of this feeling. They take their attention off that person. They take their attention off their past and they're calling energy back to them. And so now they're seeing their past from a greater level of consciousness, a greater level of awareness. And when you forgive, you overcome the emotion. And you're feeling an emotion that makes you feel wonderful and whole. 
you, why would you want to feel that other emotion? So the side effect of that is that you literally take your power back. So then the events in your life that are the most highly emotional, that have the highest emotional quotients, that create the, the emotions that, that create fear or that create pain or that create aggression or anger or hatred, it cause us to freeze frames in time and cause reality to become very discontinuous. We freeze the memory in the brain. The problem is if it keeps happening enough times, the trauma is not in the brain, it's in the body as well. So now, the effect of that uh, long term then, is that, it's, that the memory gets burned into the implicit memory system, the non-declarative declarative memory system. So when a person starts feeling those elevated emotions, wow, the person literally resets the baseline for trauma and now the person doesn't have to try to forgive. <laughs> they're, they're no longer thinking about their past. The body's being taken out of the past into the present moment. And the side effect of that a lot of times is an instantaneous change in a person's health. Or they're suicidal and now they love life. Or, or they had all these different um, abdominal conditions and they all go away. And they're off their medications now. Their body somehow is, is freed from the chains of the past. Now, did those people have some rough moments? Yeah, they, they had some really difficult meditations um, because when you start slowing your brain waves down and you open the door between your conscious mind and your subconscious mind, it makes sense then that sometimes Pandora's box opens up and um, they sat through uh, those emotions, they sat through those memories, curious to see what's on the other side of it. And, um, our brainwave, you know, studies that we've done, uh, pre and post studies show the how trauma, anxiety and depression uh, are, are changed dramatically uh, uh, in the brain as well as, as in the body. So to me, forgiveness then is overcoming the emotion and choosing love and teaching your body emotionally. It takes time. You got to teach it to relax into the present moment, the unknown, and have it feel safe where it's not worried about something dangerous happening or recalling the past in some way. It's teaching it to be free from uh, those states, to get beyond the body, to get beyond the memories of the past and the future and get beyond uh, the environment and time. I think that's, that's the work. And so uh, if you practice that, enough times and you teach your body emotionally what that future feels like. You start putting energy in the heart. The heart starts to inform the brain that it's safe again. Uh, the heart resets the baseline uh, and the, uh, the trauma is pretty much uh, removed from the brain and body. So let's make it more be about uh, the process of opening our hearts and feeling a different emotion and seeing if by feeling those emotions we stop thinking about the past or recalling the past and we start uh, thinking about a, a new future, a more wonderful future. One of the things that this woman mentions that wasn't discussed is that she felt like she had a false purpose. Did you notice it when she said that? I would want her to expand on that more because it could be one of those throwaway comments that trained EFT practitioners are taught to pick up on and explore. In almost every case, a seemingly inconsequential statement like that can be the ticket to the paradise of healing that the person needs. It can lead straight to the core issue that may get overlooked otherwise. But besides that, Dr. Joe says that when a person recounts a past negative event, that the brain scans reveal that it's almost as if they are reliving the exact event. So he would never have a person do that. He would never have the, the person talk or think about the past negative event. This is where energy healing differs slightly from experts that believe mainly in the law of attraction concepts and ideas. Don't get me wrong, I find high value in both concepts and ideologies, but here is where I think that an energy healing tool like EFT is superb for a person with severe emotional trauma. This woman is suffering greatly. She has been deeply wounded since childbirth. I can totally understand why Dr. Joe would not want her to rethink the trauma if she won't be able to heal it right away. That would just cause her more pain and more trauma. But what if there was a way to relieve her pain instantly? What if there was a way to do it gradually over 
just a short period of time, like a month, so that when she thought about the past events, she felt no emotional pain. EFT will remove all emotional pain from any past event, no matter how bad or difficult it was at the time, and no matter how bad it feels in the here and now present moment. But with EFT, you could be healed in about 12 hours. 12 hours versus 365 hours. Now do I have your attention? Usually here is how EFT would work with a person with severe trauma. They work with a practitioner for one hour. The person feels a lot of relief about the memories that were able to be accessed for that session. The person feels so much relief that they think they are totally cured and go home. But then their subconscious mind brings up other memories that the person did not discuss with their EFT practitioner. So for the next session, they bring up the new memory, they tap for it, and all the emotional pain is gone again. The person go, goes home, feels fantastic, but then another memory from the past comes up with its own set of beliefs and negative feelings. They have another session and so on and so on and so on. It's difficult to predict how long it takes with EFT or with any modality, but I would say
Even for extreme cases, it takes about a month of two to three sessions per week to completely heal from past trauma. Like I said, with EFT, it takes about 12 hours. With meditation, it takes over 365 hours. And you still may have a re relapse of feeling the pain from the past. What I think may end up discouraging a woman like this is being told that if she doesn't do the work every single day and push herself past her physical discomfort point, that she'll never heal. That's what she was implicitly told here. And that's just simply not a nice thing to tell someone when it's not true if you know how to do EFT. I know that Dr. Joe knows and approves of EFT, but I don't think he understands how effective it is and how quickly it works. It is also concerning that apparently it is typical for a person who doesn't heal themselves of the trauma using something like EFT to have a horrible feeling during their meditation, as Dr. Joe said. And that is when they think they are doing something wrong, but actually using his this method, that's doing it right. So the message is, you're going to have to go through a very difficult meditation and a horrible feeling to progress. Again, it's not necessary if the person was to do EFT. I want to bring up an important question. Wouldn't it be much easier for a person to forgive their perpetrators if, when they rethought the past event, they had no more pain? Of course it would. EFT is like psychological surgery. You open a person up, remove the emotional pain, sew them back up, and you're done. Using meditation to heal someone is the long way to go about it. That's like taking your vitamins and minerals to heal the deep-rooted emotional pain. When you can clear up and remove past emotional pain, then it will be much quicker and easier to open up your heart. And opening up your heart to being an unconditionally loving being is the last step to complete healing. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. Share it with your friends and loved ones who can use this information to their benefit. Thanks for watching and never give up hope on healing yourself. You can heal yourself of anything, no matter how advanced it might be.